If you look at every other state um, or country that has legalized the use of uh, marijuana, there have not been specific resources provided to invest in those communities that have received the most harm as a result of the mass incarceration. Uh, in New York, we like to do that different. We like to make sure that there are opportunities for um, just uh, economic justice as well as social justice. So you want to vacate the records, but you also want to provide uh, in, uh, investments in those communities that have been most damaged by mass incarceration. Assemblywoman, I, I think it's states like Colorado. They have taken and, and set aside funds, but those funds traditionally are, 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 are funds that are kind of targeting people who have suffered from addiction problems with these issues. Why, why should, should incarceration uh, receive a priority over people who are being harmed by this to begin with? Well, I, I'm not suggesting to you that New York is not interested in, in looking at uh, adding resources into um, drug treatment and drug prevention as well as drug education. We are. But we also, at the same time, uh, have a, a total body of people who, whose lives have been disinvested in, whose communities have been disinvested in. And my premise is that, and, and I would argue that I'll be right, that if you give the proper investment, both social and economic, you turn those communities around and so instead of them being dependent on government, they'll be the responsible citizens contributing to government. Would it uh, be dependent on funds that are coming from the taxation of marijuana sales? It would be dependent on those resources, exactly. Would a maintenance of effort for the resources that are already being expended towards those communities. How would you implement it? How would people apply uh, for the funds? How would you kind of dole it out? Well, I would say that there are any number of, of really very well-run not-for-profits in, in most communities who provide mental health counseling, uh, who provide uh, legal assistance, uh, who provide support for um, children uh, who need to have access to different kinds of health care that may or may not be available. Um, there's municipalities who could invest in the quality of the sidewalks that are in these neighborhoods so children might be able to say ride a bike on, on, this, on the sidewalk instead of in the street. There's opportunities to invest in playgrounds. There's opportunities to invest in communities and providing those things for folks that will enhance their quality of life, prepare them uh, for uh, job training, uh, assist them if they have a desire uh, to be in business, uh, get, with the training, woman. with the technical support, with the incubator space. Um, so I think you have an opportunity to turn communities around. All of these uh, investments seem honorable. At the same time, how confident are you that that taxation of legal marijuana will actually be the pot of gold that you think? I mean, California reported in 2018, um, which is the first full year of legalization, that tax revenues actually came in at just over a third of what was projected, which had been $1 billion. So they brought in $345 million from the taxation of marijuana. So it was disappointing compared to what the state had actually gone into thinking would be gained. Well, you know, $347 million is, is, a, is, a, is a lot of cash, and it would go a long way uh, if just a very small percentage of it began to be invested in the lives of people who have been disenfranchised. So, I mean, uh, uh, quite honestly, if you uh, look at what the uh, researchers are saying, New York has the largest market of uh, underground use of cannabis, and some estimated at <laughs> $2 billion. I don't suggest that all of that turns quickly day one uh, into an above ground economy, but I do think there is a potential to do that, and I think that's the, the direction we have to work towards.